Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our cell meeting for today, our master class for today. And um, the master class is um, where we show you, talk about the technicalities in the business and how we can help you build something quite amazing. We give you the secrets of the business, the skill sets you need to become massively successful in the business. That's basically what we do at the cell meeting, at the master class. Now, typically, for you to enter the master class, you must have gone through the cell meetings. But I know there are people here who have not, you must have gone through the IPO completely. But I know there are people here who have not gone through the IPO. So um, we're still going to continue. We're going to run the master class nonetheless. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about a very important topic, very powerful topic. The one topic that if you get right, can help you create a very powerful business. And that topic is simply how to sponsor a new distributor effectively, right? How to sponsor a new distributor. Now that topic is divided into two. The first part is um, um, the mindset, right? The mindset. And then the second part is the activities that goes with sponsoring a new distributor. So for today, we're going to be looking at the mindset aspect of it. And um, it is very important to understand that because if you get this right, your business will just be on autopilot. You won't be playing what, what I like to call the game of addition and subtraction. Because the game of addition and subtraction is what so many people play. And when you play that game, you get exhausted, you get tired, you get frustrated, and you abandon the business. And we don't want you to abandon the business. That's why we want you to play, um, to run this business effectively, how it should be run. So you don't play the game of um, addition and subtraction. So I'm sharing my screen right now. I believe you can see my screen. You can see my screen. If you can see my screen, can I see your hand up? You can see my screen. How to sponsor a new distributor? Is that what you're seeing? Okay. Are you seeing this? You are seeing how to sponsor a new distributor effectively, right? Great. Great. That's fine. Now I am going to um, walk you through how you can effectively sponsor someone in the business. And I want you to understand the mindset for successfully sponsoring a new distributor. I want you to take as much notes as you can, because what I'm, what I'm showing you here can be the one activity, one thing you do well that will take your business to where it's supposed to be. So you don't play the game of addition and subtraction, always recruiting new people. The more you recruit them, the more they die off. The more you recruit them, the more, the more, the more they die off. So you need to understand how this works, right? So let us proceed. But first of all, let us look at how we can reprogram, reprogram the new distributor, right? The reprogramming of the new distributor. Because this is somebody who has been in a circular setup, um, in a job, in a business of his own, you know, doing things in a particular way, and now they want to come into network marketing. They've seen this amazing opportunity called network marketing. They've paid to be in the opportunity, and now they have come in. They didn't leave the old mindset at home. They didn't leave the loser mindset at home. They didn't leave the excuse mindset at home. They brought everything to your desk. And what you need to do, just like the consultant you are, is to, be, to begin the slow but deliberate act of reprogramming these distributors. Now, when you are reprogramming a new distributor, you also ensure that you reprogram yourself in the right direction. Because when you don't know what to do and how to do these things, guess what? You fail in the business from the beginning. That's why you see that some people could just sponsor a handful of people and they make crazy cash flow. Why some people can sponsor the entire world and if they have to continue sponsoring for them to continue making money. So you can see the difference. Mr. A sponsors just 10 people and he builds a business that pays him well over 10, 15, 20 million every month. Meanwhile, Mr. B sponsors 1,000 people and up to this moment, Mr. B is not making up to 100,000 every month. And for Mr. B to make that 100K, Mr. B has to go again and responsor, responsor, responsor. You need to understand why that is happening. Right? So, first of all, um, we need to understand what it means to sponsor somebody, right? We're going to come to that. But let us look at the mentality of the new distributor. Why did he pay his money? The man paid his money because he wanted to do the business. You need to get that clear. He didn't give you the money because he had, was looking for somewhere to dump that 8,000 and run away. He paid the money because he wanted to do the business. So you, who is the upline, need to understand that clearly, that this man paid to do the business not paid because he wanted to throw away his money. Understand that clearly, because it's very important for you to know that this is the guy that wants to do the business, right? 
Now, understand why he joined the business. That's another thing you need to do. You need to understand why he joined the business. That means the cost of sponsoring him in the business, you need to take him through what we call the why. Understand why he signed up in the business, right? And normally we try to tell people is a, a scenario where you have a two feet thick plank, two feet wide, two feet thick, and 200 feet long plank. That plank is placed on the ground, on the bare floor. And we ask you, walk across this plank from across the 200 meters length, and you will be given a millionaire. Will you do it? The answer is yes. Almost everybody will do it. Just the, the plank is flat on the ground. You just climb it, they walk 200 meters on the, on the, on the plank. A millionaire is there. Everybody will do it. But if you take that plank and use it to make a bridge across two 100 story buildings, and you tell them, okay, climb to the top of the building and then move across from one building to the other building, moving um, across that bridge made of that same plank, that same plank, two inches thick, two inches wide. Will you walk that length? And for almost everybody, the answer is no. And you ask them, why did you, why would you do it? After all, it was the same plank on the ground. You didn't fall off on the ground. Why didn't you do it? He said that the risk is too high. Now, because that risk is too high, that guy cannot cross. But what if your child is on the other side of the building, at the edge, screaming, Daddy, help me, Daddy, help me, and there was fire coming up from that building on which your child is standing, coming up, leaking up towards your child very fast. Would you cross that bridge to save your child? And for everybody, the answer was yes. And why will you do it? You're going to do it because you know that right now the reason for crossing is much bigger than one million naira. For your child, you will cross and grab the boy and come back to the other side because the reason is strong. So you need to understand why you joined the business because if your reason for joining the business is not driving enough, is not pushing enough, is not pushing enough, is not strong enough, guess what? At the slightest provocation, you will abandon the business. Once you are tested, you abandon the business. Once you talk to somebody about the business and the person doesn't sign up, you are not abandon the business. So you need to understand why that man joined the business and let him share his reason with you. When he shares his reason with you, let him do a write-up on it. Do a write-up, preferably a one-page write-up on why he joined the business. Let him explain everything in a single page why he joined the business, why he joined the business. When he do, does that, he will have exactly, the, known exactly why he joined the business. He would have documented it with his own handwriting. And guess what? He will be ready to go the mile with you, right? Now you say, teach him the way to go. Teach him the way to go. You are sponsoring him. Let him know what to do. If he does not know what to do, he will fail, right? The Bible says, teach a child the way he should follow so that when he grows up, he will not depart from it. Same thing with our business. These guys coming into the business are new kids in the business. It's your job to teach them the right thing to do. They want to learn. They want to learn. You need to understand that they want to learn. No, almost, I mean, people don't naturally come into this business because they're looking for somebody to argue with. Yes, you're going to get a couple of them who are going to argue with you, but guess what? They want to learn. So when you tell them this is the mentality of the business, this is the mindset in the business, this is why we do what we do, guess what? They are willing to listen to you. Right? Be nice to your distributor, new distributor. Don't make them regret joining the business. They can abandon the business. It's as simple as that. So people can say, is it not 38,000 naira to hell with it? Instead of somebody insulting me for 38,000 naira, let me just leave the business and have my peace. Right? So be nice to the new distributor. Don't quarrel with him. Be nice to him. Listen to what he's saying, but send your own points down too, as firm as you can. Right? So he understands that what we are doing is a business. Don't be insulting. Don't be so short-tempered with him. Just be nice to him and give him the information he needs to get. And let him know that if he's going to do these things with you, we will help him to succeed. If he's not going to do it with you, we will not bother ourselves so much, right? Because we wouldn't want to be a strain upon them and upon ourselves. So just be nice to them, right? Now, remember, the new distributor is blind. It is your job to help him see. Make the vision clear. As simple as that. The new distributor is blind. And like what he said, our job is to make the blind see. You are a consultant, right? That is your job. A consultant's job is to consult, to give advice, to show people the way to go, show them the right thing to do. But it is their job to do the right thing. Don't mistake it. Don't mistake your job and the job of a consultant, right? Your, the job of a consultant and the job of a prospect. The prospect's job is to go the direction you've shown him 
The consultant's job is to show you what to do. If you go see a consultant in a hospital and you tell the doctor, I am having a heart attack on my heart attack, I'm having a cardiovascular failure, I'm having this, I'm having that, the doctor says, take this panadol three times a day for seven days. The doctor will not take the panadol for you and expect the, the ailment to go. No. The doctor recommends what you should do and you should do your own. So too in our business. Our job is to make the blind see. Give them all the information they require, make that information clear to them, and let them take it up by themselves. Now, you need to understand something that is true in our, in our profession. If you don't take your time in starting the new distributors right, you will spend more time trying to resurrect them when they die in the business. And you have only one chance to sponsor them well, only one chance to get it right. So get it right at the beginning because it is easier for you to sponsor another person than to raise a dead person in the business. So you need to ensure that you start them right. Make sure they do the right things. Make sure you guide them at the beginning. And guess what? Anybody can sponsor somebody very, very well. You don't need your upline to sponsor your distributor well, right? Once you have signed up, once you have taken these trainings, once you know what to do, you don't need your upline to do anything for you. Take charge of the business by yourself. When people come into the business, tell them what to do. Yes, you can get more information from your upline, but tell them what to do. Let your business be in your hands, not in the hands of your upline. Guide everybody who joins you in the business in the right path that they should take. And I'm going to be elaborating on everything you need to know today, right? So that you can sponsor your, your downlines very, very well. So let us look at um, Duplication 101. Because for you to sponsor your distributor well, you are effectively duplicating. And what is duplication? Duplication is reproducing yourself in your downlines. You, you begin to, it's, it's so that if I sign you up today, tomorrow, you should be able to sign somebody up because you're going to follow exactly what I did to sign you up, right? And whatever I have done, what I'm, whatever I do to you today, you should do to your downlines tomorrow. That is duplication. And as you do it, you teach that down the line. So for you to duplicate effectively, you cannot duplicate without a system. Because a system is what everybody will copy as they try to reproduce the business. They will copy the system. So you need to, first of all, learn the system. When you learn the system, you, cannot, you can now duplicate. You can now teach the system that you have learned. And as you teach the system, you teach your downlines to teach your downlines. And as you teach your downlines to teach your downlines, your own downline, you teach your downlines to tell the downlines to teach your downlines, right? So you tell your downlines to tell the downlines to teach the downlines. So for you to duplicate, you have to do the activity. You have to tell them to do the activity. You have to do the activity with them, right? Now you cannot duplicate without tools. You cannot duplicate without tools. Very, very important. If you want to duplicate, you must use tools because a tool can be used by anybody, right? You are not the only one using the tool, so it can be used by anybody. That's the power. That's the power um, of, our, of our business because we are able to use these tools and put these tools in the hands of people. And as people use these tools, they too create amazing success for themselves, right? So you cannot duplicate without tools. You cannot duplicate without a system. When you're trying to duplicate, what you need to do is to tell people what to do. You show them what to do. You try and do it with them, right? They, they will try and do it with you when you're looking at them. And then you will not let them be able to do on their own, right? So the system for duplication is tell, show, try, do. Tell them what to do, do it with them, then let them try to do it in your presence with you monitoring them, and then let them now start doing it on their own. By the time you've been going forward, back or forward, back or you get to an extent where they become good in the system. So you need to, as a matter of urgency, allow your people to become successful. Allow them to grow. Allow them to take charge. Allow them to do things in your team. That is duplication because you cannot do everything by yourself. If you are the only one doing everything, guess what? You don't have a business, right? And your job needs to be, your job is to be the best copycat. So you need to tell them that for you to duplicate, you need to be the best copycat. So copy whatever we're doing that is working. We tell you, you must be your best self. You must be the best copycat. And in our business, they say the best copycat wins, but you must copy the right cat. If you copy the wrong cat, you're in trouble. For you to build a successful, a successful business, you need to understand that our team, in our business, 
you need to copy as much as you can. Because these things you are copying have created results, have made a lot of people become millionaires. And since they become millionaires, you too can become a millionaire too, right? Because you are copying an activity that is effective and working. So your job is to be the best copycat. If you don't duplicate, you cannot own your life. And that's the fact. If you don't duplicate, you cannot live the good life, the La Buena Vida. That's the fact. Because you are always going to be the one doing all the activities on your own. If you don't duplicate, you will abandon the business. That needs to be very, very clear to you. Because you will be under a lot of pressure. So the next thing you're going to think about is how your job is paying so and so, and then you go back to the dead end job, right? So you need to ensure that you learn how to duplicate. Do not complicate the system. That's one of the things you also need to understand. Do not complicate the system. Use it as simple as we present it to you. Our system is functional, it's effective, it has created millionaires. Use the system as simple as it is. Do not complicate the system. This is the reason why some people fail. Because our system is so easy for them to look down on. Look at it and say, oh, why are you telling me to do, to, to do this, do this? No, I am a doctor, I'm a professor, blah, 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 right? You tell the person, say, I is. I is will help you become, will make you successful in the business. The man said, no, I'm a professor of English language. I is is not correct. The correct word there is I am. Then he goes about, I am, I am, I am, I am, and he's always broke. But the other man who understood the power of duplication, understood that you should keep the system as simple as, as, it, as it is, who understands that um, you, you just do exactly what you have been doing that has created success, the man just goes out there saying, I is, I is, I is, I is, and get what happens. He becomes a millionaire saying, I is. And you are just saying, I am, and yet you are broke, right? That's why um, Jim, uh, not Jim Ron, um, what's his name? Darren Hardy, in his book, Making the Shift, Landmine Number One, in Making the Shift, said, one of the biggest problems you will have in this business is your current level of knowledge. And he said, he went further to say that your current level of knowledge will be the number one reason why you cannot succeed in our business. The more, number one reason why you cannot succeed. He said that the more qualified you are, the more less likely, the less likely it is for you to succeed. Because you are now prone to arguments, you are now bringing up a whole lot of logic, and you don't understand that in this business, it is not about what you do. Because you have been rewarded all through your life because of what you have done. How well you performed in school, you were related, how well you ran during the race, you took the, you, you took the first position, you were, you were rewarded. If you um, did very well in class, you were rewarded. If you behaved very well at home, you were rewarded. So you were rewarded based on the activities you did as an individual. But when you come into our business, you are no longer being rewarded as an individual. You are being rewarded by the, by the activities that you can get your team to do along with you. That needs to be very, very clear. So whatever it is you're doing in the business, if your team cannot do it with you, that is an activity that does not duplicate. That is an activity that you cannot get into. Even the video presentation I am doing right now, if it cannot duplicate, I should not be doing it. But why am I doing it? I'm doing it because it is recorded. It's a recorded presentation. I'm recording it currently. And you know what that means? What that means is this. Tomorrow, you can sign up somebody and call the person and say, let me teach you how you can build a very powerful duplicating business by learning how to sponsor your new distributor effectively. And so what do you do? You take the video, you put it to your laptop, you press play, and I will be there to show them again how they can do exactly what you are currently doing. It means you are duplicating. You are showing them the same training that you, you saw, right? By simply using the video that I have done. That is duplication. So don't complicate our system. Use our system as simple as we show them to you, right? Now, you don't need to sponsor the whole world to be massively successful in our business. Get that right. You don't need to sponsor the whole world to be massively successful in our business. All you need to do is to effectively sponsor the few people you sign up. Sponsor them exactly very well, duplicate yourself in them, and you will build a massive business. And for you to be duplicating them, you must be using the 444 system and the SMO checklist. Because this is a written down system that tells you exactly what to do, what to say, to help your people take charge and begin to build an amazing business for themselves, right? So this is already documented for you. You do not need the whole world to become massively successful in the business. So I say, eh, so I have to keep on recruiting, bringing people, bringing people, no. It's not bringing people. All you need to do is to sponsor the ones you have well. If you have two members sponsored very well in the business under one account, that's about four million naira every month for you. Two people properly sponsored, running a business, learning how to sponsor and sponsor your own people is four million naira monthly in the business. 
So when you see what we're talking about, you understand why we tell you that for your business to succeed, for your business to grow, you need to learn how to duplicate yourself massively. Now let's continue with duplication, some more duplication notes. When you duplicate very well, your business leaves your hands and begins to grow independent of you. That's a fact. Your business goes to Canada, goes to China, goes to Korea, goes to different countries of the world, and people are running because they're following that simple duplicating system that you have handed down the team. And as they do that, you too begin to create results for yourself, right? And what you also need to know when you sponsor somebody into the business, protect your new distributor before they meet dream killers. When you sign up somebody online, call the person immediately after the person has paid and, and inoculate him. Inoculate him against dream killers. There are so many dream killers out there. People who have given up on their dreams, they want to talk you out of your own dreams. They are out there, so many of them. They tell them that the business does not work, that I have done it, it does not work. If it does not work for me, it does not work for you. Blah, 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 blah. And your downlines are inclined to believe these people because these are people at the same level as them. As them. These are equally broke people like them. They are fellow broke friends. They go hang around together. They will believe them when they tell them that this does not work more than they believe you. So I need you to inoculate them. Let them know that they do not need to speak to anybody until they have been trained in the business, right? So get that done. Now, personally call everyone you sponsor, let them know you are there to work with them and you will be there to mentor them along the way. Call everybody you sponsor, right? I will talk to you about that call. And then if you sponsor someone, what I will advise you to do is to take the person's name and give it to your leader, right? And let your leader make the call on your behalf to create the third party credibility so that this person begins to see this business as not just you, as the fact that there are other people in the team above you who are also interested in your success in the business, right? So, all leaders must personally ensure your downlines are properly sponsored and encourage them as they run the business. Now, if you're a leader in this team, you must be aware of everybody joining your business. You must be aware, especially those in the encoding room. You must be aware of everybody who is joining your business. Be aware. Don't leave your business to chance. When you are aware of them, as they sign up, you have the, 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 the obligation to call them and tell them, give them the welcome message I'll be showing you how to do later on, right? I'll give me a second. Okay, um, let's look at conditions for duplication, the conditions for duplication. Number one, you must be selfless. If you want to grow a huge team, you must be selfless. You must be ready to sacrifice for the team. You must be ready to work for the team. You must be ready to train the team, even when the conditions are not favorable. You must be ready to do everything to do, right? You must be disciplined, very important. You say discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. If you have a training to do, make sure you are there to conduct the training. If you need to do presentations, make sure you are, you are there for the presentations. If your downlines need to be in, need, need to run presentations, make sure you are there to ensure that your downlines run the presentations. You must exercise a very high level of discipline if you must succeed in this business. Because nobody is going to come chase you. In your office, you can decide, if you decide to be, to, to be indisciplined in the office environment, guess what? There are accountability systems on ground. You can be queried, you can be sent uh, on suspension, you can be sacked, your salary can be deducted. Whatever they want to do, they will do. So because of that, you be straight. Do the right thing. But in this, your own business, you decide to become the weak link. In your job, which is another man's business, you'll be at your best behavior. But in this, your own business, you now decide to be a sleeping person in your business. You become so indisciplined. You don't start your presentations on time. You don't do your presentations. You don't, you don't, uh, you fix meetings. You're not there for the meetings. You don't lead your team. You won't go very far, right? So you must be able to, must be disciplined for you to be able to duplicate very well and sponsor people very well. You must be consistent. You must be consistent. When you start up an activity, you have to follow the activity to the end. You must be consistent in all the activities you do. Consistent in your meetings, in your trainings, in whatever you're doing, be consistent, right? They say a river does not cut through rocks by its force, but through its consistency. By the time you have hit that the river is pounding on that rock consistently for a period of time, guess what? At the point in time, that river can open a hole through the rock and the water starts flowing through the rock because of consistency. So be consistent, right? Because they say consistency wears down resistance. 
consistency was than resistance. The more consistent that you are doing something, the less resistant that activity will become. It's not as if the initial resistance is not there. The initial resistance is there, but because you are consistent, you now have more force to break through the resistance. And you become free, right? You must have a very good character. You must have a good character for you to run the business, right? Because people will not do business with you if you don't have a good character. They must like you. They must trust you for them to do business with you. So what you need to do is to try and make yourself as likable as possible. Now, making yourself likable does not mean you have to be, you have to be, you have to be a jack. does not mean you have to be foolish, right? You, have, you must be disciplined. You must be selfless. You must be consistent. But you must also have a very good character in place so that people can like you, trust you, feel relaxed with you, and tell you things, right? That is how you can support them well. Let me tell you something. As you begin to build your business, you will have a lot of your downlines who will come share information with you because they trust you. These are privileged information they're going to share with you, some information their husbands or their wives don't know about, some information they didn't even tell their pastor does not even know about. They will come and tell you. Their parents don't know it. They will tell you because they believe that you are selfless, disciplined, have a good character, right? And you are there for their progress. So they will give you information. Somebody came and sat down and said, um, I want to do the business. I just had to do the business. Let me start by telling you everything in my life. I said, whoa, everything in your life. And I said, yes. And he started talking, 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 talking. All you need to do, listen to them. Have a good character. Control your temper. I mentioned this earlier. Control your temper if you want to grow your business. Because the truth is this. Some downlines can really be very, very, very nasty. Some downlines think they have the monopoly of nastiness. Control your temper because you are protecting your business. Now, you're controlling your temper does not mean you should allow every Tom Dick or Harry Wong to come and say crap to you, to say crap to you and get away with it. No. But even if you have to respond, respond with caution because you're a leader and people are looking up to you. If you are talking to somebody, exchanging words and things like that with him, and your downline is, or some other downline is strolling, or let's say a prospect is strolling on the way to the hall, and saw you doing that, when you get to the hall, you now come in, my name is Mr. Kelechi, um, we're going to blah, 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 we invite you to come out the bounce. It's not this one that's all fighting with somebody outside. They will, use it. they will use the word fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting with somebody outside. Because the character is not good. You're always hot tempered, right? So control your temper, very important. You must have integrity. If you tell them you're going to do something, do it. If you tell them you're going to do something, do it, right? Whatever you tell them you're going to do, do it. You must have that level of integrity. And that's the fact. We tell you, we give you the mastermind slot where we're going to support you and work with you for the first um, um, for, for six months to build your business. Give them the mastermind slot. What does the mastermind slot mean? It means that you have plugged your people into the, the cell meeting of the masterminds. It is the masterminds around their cell meetings. The cell meeting is not in the hands of anybody, the mastermind and the global leaders. Right? So they run these cell meetings. So if these people are plugged into the cell meetings, they are getting support from the masterminds. But other leaders can take the IPO, they can take the QSD, they can take other things. But you find out that most times it's the mastermind that handles the cell meetings, right? At worst case scenario, a G leader can join in the cell meetings and then the masterclass too. So you have to ensure, ensure that whatever you tell them you're going to do, that you do it, right? That you do it. That is going to build credibility for you in the business, people will listen to you and then they will help, they will, they will try and do exactly what you are telling them to do. Because you see, people, for you to be a mentor of someone, a mentor is not some not a position that you take on your own. No. A mentor is different from being a boss. A boss is a title that you take. I am your boss. And the guy cannot change it because the truth is this, you are the boss. But for you to be a mentor to someone, you cannot mentor someone by force. If someone says, you are my mentor, it means the person has bestowed the title on you. And you must merit the title. And for you to merit the title of mentor, you must have passed all these tests, the selflessness test, the discipline test, the consistency test, the good character test, the control your temper test, the integrity test, you must have passed all of them. The passion and enthusiasm test too. You must have great, great passion for what we're doing. Great passion for the business. Great enthusiasm. Every day you wake up, you wake up with so much happiness, so much joy. Say, thank God, another day I'm alive, another day for me to hit my dreams. Because there's a whole lot of joy you can get 
when you succeed in our business. So approach the business with passion and enthusiasm. That is the only way you can grow. And as you try to sponsor your people in your business and you have a lot of passion and enthusiasm, it radiates. They say a smile is felt even through a phone call. You know, when you're talking to somebody and putting smiles on the phone, you will know. You will know. Right? So you must have a lot of passion and enthusiasm to build your business. So what are the requirements? Requirements for duplication. Number one requirement for duplication is knowledge of the subject matter. Very important. You want to duplicate? You need to have knowledge of what you are trying to duplicate. Is it not only network marketing? Yes, you need to have the knowledge of network marketing. You need to be able to read books. Read books. Very important you read books. For so many people, they think we are joking when we tell them to read books. You see, these, are, these books are books that will really, really help you to become successful in our business. Read them. Very important. Right? You look here. Look here. These are some of my books in my library. Right? That is my office library. And here, we have over, over 60 books in the business. 60 books in the business. Every book we tell you to read, we have them here. This is GoPro. Read. GoPro, very important. Right? Um, compound effects. We tell you to read it. It's here. Compound effects. Read your books. These books will help you become successful in the business. Your first year in network marketing. Read it. Look at it here. Read it. Right? Because when you read your books, you become an expert in what we are telling you to do. You become an expert in the same subject matter, right? The super connector, you read the book, read it. It tells you how you can be a connector because we are connectors in the system. We are connectors in the business, right? So you can see them. These books, all these books here are books on leadership by John Maxwell. Read the books, read books. When you read books, you become an expert in the subject matter that you are talking about, right? Read them. So you need knowledge. You need knowledge for you to be able to become successful in our business. You need knowledge. Knowledge will not stroll into your life. For you to have knowledge, you have to acquire them by reading books. Very, very important, right? You need physical strength. What that means is that you need to use our products. Use our energy pendant that strengthens you. Use it, okay? The energy pendant tends to strengthen you, right? Strengthens you so that um, you, you, um, Energy pen that strengthens you, allows you to be able to perform um, be above what you are normally used to doing, right? So use our products, exercise a lot. You need all this stuff for you to become very, very effective. Use our products. You need mental strength, like I said, that you should read a lot of books. You need the mental strength from the books. You need financial strength, very important, for you to buy your tools, for you to buy the call cards, for you to buy a good phone, for you to buy a laptop. You need the mental strength for all those stuff, so the financial strength to achieve all those stuff. Very, very important, right? You need financial strength to take care of your life, take care of your family, because if you don't solve all these problems that continue to be devil you every day, you become distracted in the business. You need financial strength, very important. You need emotional strength, emotional strength. You need emotional strength. Without emotional strength, you can't go far in the business, because in this business, your friends would break your hearts. Unlike the normal business, some of you sell clothes. You take those clothes to your friends and you tell your friend to buy the clothes. Your friend looks at the clothes, tests everything, and tells you, I cannot buy the clothes. And you don't feel so bad about it. You feel it's just one of those things, you know, um, the person is not ready yet, and you don't take it to be anything. But in our business, in our business, you, you tell your friends, um, um, come and join my business, and the person tells you, I'm not interested. Guess what? You become broken hearted. You start weeping, wailing. You run under the bed and you start crying like a jilted teenager. You become brokenhearted. I told my friend to join the business. He refused to join the business. Oh my goodness, I'm dead. Mr. Kelechi, thunder from Afghanistan will fire you and the rest of them. That was what he told me. So you need emotional strength. Sometimes it can be so, so, so hurting. You've seen that your business is not growing how you want it to grow. And you really need that strength to grow. So you need to understand that up front. Yesterday I was asking a young lady, um, how much she made last month. She said she didn't make money. You could actually see sadness in her face. She didn't make money last month. 
I said, how much did you make last month? She said, she didn't make good money last month. She made just very little money. She didn't want to say it. I insisted. And guess what? She made 900,000 Naira last month. And she was genuinely emotionally disturbed because she made 900,000 Naira. I told her, you know what? You guys in, 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 in this team have a way of downplaying money, making money look useless. I asked her, do you know the salary of the Inspector General of Police? She said, no. I said, the IG salary, if he doesn't put his hand in any other thing, illegal, his salary is 711,000 Naira. It's online. 711,000 Naira. Meaning you make 200,000 Naira more than the number one policeman in Nigeria. Your salary, with that kind of cash flow you're having, you are the type of person that office workers will go, your, your colleagues in the office will go to a shrine to go and do juju to kill you so that they can take your job. That's what they will do. And you are looking at this as if it is nothing. But then, in the environment where she is, she's in front of very big names. Very big names who are doing millions of naira every day. So she can actually want to look at herself as not being that big. But you can't look at yourself as not being that big, right? You need a very strong emotional strength to succeed in our business. Thank you. <clears throat> right? You need spiritual strength. Spiritual strength for you to succeed in our business. So for some people, they really believe that for them to succeed in this business, they have to do everything on their own. You can't do it on your own. It is God that blesses. That's why I will tell you that our, we have three cardinal points in our team. First of them, you must, we didn't say you may, we said you must commend your business to God. We didn't rise in this team on our own accord. We didn't rise to become top enough on, 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 on our own accord. And we always make sure at the level of the G leaders meeting and the mastermind meetings, we always make sure that we drum this into our heads as we start the meetings. That your rising is not of your own accord. It's only by the grace of God. So make sure you understand that clearly. And make sure you drum that into the heads of your downline and into your own head. Because when you start doing one million naira every month, you begin to feel that you have arrived. You begin to have this sense of, of um, this pompous attitude around you, right? You become so overblown. You want to start feeling that everybody is a nobody, that right now you are making one million naira monthly, you've arrived at the business. People who are making 20 million naira monthly go on their knees and thank God and humble themselves as they do this business. So don't think you have arrived. You need the grace of God. You need the strength of God to grow your business massively. So how do you start up your new distributor? Now, pay attention very well. How do you start up your new distributors? Listen to practical steps that you will take when someone signs up into your business. Miss one of these and your business will fail. Miss one, your business is, is dead in the water, right? Because you don't know. One of my biggest leaders in our team was sponsored into this company by someone. Sponsored into the company. I never knew. I got to know about this about two years or so after I sponsored the person. And he said he was sponsored. The person abandoned him. They didn't do anything. Just collected his pack. And that was the last time he had from that person. And he told me that, um, that um, when I sponsored him, he came for the presentation. He listened to the presentation. And during the presentation, he stood up, took his bag, and walked out. It's not the same thing I signed up. I didn't see my back. I didn't see this. He walked out. <coughs> he was an assistant director. And you know the level of the assistant director. And the guy walked away. Only for him to get outside and he said something. He had the voice talking to him asking, are you walking away because you know how to run the business? Or you're walking away because you actually did the business the last time and succeeded? Or you just want to walk away? He turned, he turned back, came back and sat down and sat down, listened to the presentation, and signed up there and then in the hall with three accounts immediately. There and then, he signed up with three accounts. And I started working with him, started taking him step by step, we started working things together. And today, he's a multi-millionaire in the business. Not just that, he's a G leader today in the business. Not just that, he's a two-time Philippine trip qualifier in the business. He has... I don't need to talk about his credentials, right? The people's credentials I need to talk about are the people in his downlines. I need to talk about what his downlines are doing. 
His downlines are becoming hugely and mass massively successful in the business. So I'm not going to talk about him anymore. This is somebody that I would have lost. So ensure you follow everything from the beginning in practical steps so that they know what to do and they don't leave the business. I, can I tell you, if you learn how to spur so well, you will succeed in the business. Now, before I show you what to do, practical steps on how to sponsor, let me give you the number one secret in sponsoring that any one of you who signed up today can do. Do you know what to do? If you sign up today and somebody signs up in your team tomorrow, you have only one basic skill, one basic skill you need to learn. Skill is in a very simple language. Let us do this. That is all. When you learn how to use, let us do this. You have learned the ultimate secret in sponsoring. Can you type out what you need to say? What you need to learn? Please type it now. Very simple. Let us do this. Type it down now in the chat box. Let us do this. That is the number one secret. When you learn how to use, let us do, let us do, let us do, you will become hugely successful in our business. I will explain it to you. You signed up into the business today and you attended the IPO. You've seen everything that needs to be done. You've learned how to run the SMO checklist. You've seen how it needs to be done and you signed up somebody tomorrow. What do you do? You hold the person, let us attend the IPO. When you're done with the IPO, you hold the person again, let us make these calls, in the, let us get our name list. Both of you are still running the business. Let us get our name list. Okay, you know what? Let us make our, 50, our 150 name list. Let us get our hardcover notebook. Let us get our diary. Let us do this, let us do that. Let us do the first 50 calls. Let us do this. For those of you who are new in the business, let this be the secret that takes your business to the next level. The secret of let us do this. So that is the number one secret that everybody needs to learn how to use. When you learn how to use that secret, your business is going to go to places, right? Let us do this. Now, the first thing you need to do when somebody signs up into your business is to call and congratulate the new distributor on their decision to join. If you are the one that sponsored the person correct by yourself, you are not the one to place that call. You will take the name of the person, give to your upline, and let your upline place the call to welcome the new distributor to the team. Right? Very, very important. Because the moment the new distributor signs up, the next thing that he's doing is to go around and start talking to people about the business, trying to convince them, and everybody will be shooting, shooting him down one by one, you shoot him down, shoot him down, they match him down, and the guy comes to you completely deflated, completely um, ready to abandon the business. It is because you didn't do your own part well. You did not inoculate him. So this is the vaccine you use in inoculating your downlines when they sign up into the business, the vaccine of the welcome call. Write it down now. To inoculate your downlines, use the vaccine of the welcome call. To inoculate your new downlines, use the vaccine of the welcome call. Write that down. To inoculate your down your new distributor. So to inoculate your new distributor, use the vaccine of the welcome call. Document that in your book so that you know what to do when people sign up, right? So look at the script for welcoming the new distributor. Let me take you through that script for welcoming the new distributor. It's part of the success manual. Good morning, my name is Tunde. I am reaching you from the business hub office in Abuja. Am I, I believe I'm speaking with Mr. John, right? Now, whatever the office, the name you're using, the La Buena Vida, the Own Your Life campaign, right? Use the name. And you continue. Mr. John, this call is basically to congratulate you on your decision to sign up into the most beautiful business on earth. As a leader in your upline, it is my job to work with you and help you achieve your set goals for joining the business over the next 12 months. The man is happy. Somebody is talking to him. He didn't just sign up and nobody is talking to him. Our business is 80-year-old friendly. 
What that means is that even an eight-year-old child can create massive success in this business by simply following the simple instructions we have laid down. I will guide you over the next 12 months as together we build this amazing business. So he knows that you are in it with him. Understand, you must be the one to make the time to run the business with us. We have two important act startup activities you need to engage in over the next few days. These activities are designed to give your business a solid foundation on which to, on which to grow. Now the guy knows activity has started in the business. The first activity is the quick start guide, also known as QSG. This activity is meant to help you expand upon your, the knowledge you have about our business and to also show you more ways you can earn in this business. It is a compulsory activity in the business and holds on Monday by whatever time it is. The second activity is the initial planning orientation, also known as the IPO. This activity is where we launch your business and give you the tools required to build the business successfully and connect you to our system which drives the business. These activities are part of the foundation for an effective business and making excuses why you cannot attend any of them will only retard your business growth. We understand you are busy, but you must place the activities as priority. If not, you will never find the time to attend the program. That's very important. You need to let them know. We understand you are busy, but you must place the activities as priority. If not, you will never find the time to attend the program. I know you have questions to ask. However, we will take your questions during the IPO sessions. Congratulations once again, Mr. Tunde. God bless you. By doing this very simple call, what you have done is to completely inoculate this man. And he will no longer go out to start looking for people. He already has your number. Whenever he has any challenge, somebody says anything, guess what? You are the one he's going to call before he falls into that trap. Set their expectations right. In setting the expectation, what I try to do is this. I sit down with them and I ask them, you sign up into this business. How much do you think if you are making that amount six months from today is going to make this business worth the while for you? How much do you think will make the business worth the while for you? Now the guy says, um, if I'm making, um, um, sorry, I'm asking him, what is the minimum amount that you will be making and you will say this business is worth it? What is the minimum amount? Let's say the minimum amount is um, one million a month. So we say five million a month. I will ask him a question again. I said, that means if you are making 999,000 naira every month, you will say this um, from your six months, you will say to hell with this business. This business is not a good business. Let me abandon it and let me go and continue with my job of 100,000 naira a month. Is that what you will do? They said, no, now why would they do that? I said, great, because you've not answered my question. My question was, what is the barest minimum for which you will say this is a useless business? They will now reduce them. My barest minimum can be 400,000 naira a month. I said, what well, does that mean? That if you are making 399,000 naira, you will say to hell with this business, 399,000 naira, let me abandon it and let me go and face my job of 100,000 naira a month. You say, no, they won't. I said, but then you still have not answered my question. Because there's a reason I'm asking you, right? You're not telling them the reason yet. But you need to ask them again. So tell me, understand it clearly, because for any answer you give me, I will ask you, I will reduce the answer by one kobo, and I will ask you that question again. And the guy will answer, okay, the, my, my minimum, I cannot go below my minimum is 100,000 naira. I will not come again. So Mr. Tunde, what you're saying, for 999,000 naira, you will, I mean, for, for 99,000 naira, a month, you will abandon this business. Is that what you are saying? I said, not as if I want to abandon it. I said, no, but answer it directly. No, I want to abandon it. So you have still not answered the barest minimum. Because you see, when we show people this business, some people begin to think about millions, millions, millions. When their life can change with an extra 50,000 a month, the man cannot say, okay, the barest minimum I can go is um, 50,000 a month. I cannot do more than less than that. I ask them the question again, they say, no. So for less than 50,000 naira a month, they will abandon the business. I say, okay, Mr. Tunde, pay attention now. What you're trying to tell me 
is that for an extra 600,000 Naira a year, you feel that won't be good to add to your probably 1.2 million Naira you make every year by making 100, 100K in a month. That means instead of making 1.8 million Naira in a year, because of how you feel, you believe you should lose 600,000 and be stuck with only 100,000 Naira. Is that what you're trying to imply? He looks at it from a different angle again. But some people, they come down to as little as 10, 20,000 Naira. Meanwhile, they started from 100,000 Naira. What you are trying to establish for them is the fact that they can hit those minimum figures they want to hit very fast in the system and show them how they can hit it. And the man is going to be there to do the business. The average man for an extra 50,000 Naira, 100,000 Naira, he is not going anywhere. If he makes 50,000 Naira every month in this business, he's not going anywhere because he knows that without the business, he won't make that extra 50,000 Naira. And with that extra 50,000 Naira, that is 600,000 Naira in a month, his house rent is taken care of. So they will sit down and do the business. So set their expectations right. Let them understand the reason they are there and also let them know that it is their responsibility to grow their business. Your job is to mentor them and work with them. Encourage them to take notes during trainings. Encourage them to listen to what we say during trainings. Encourage them to do the activities during training. Encourage them to do the activities that are documented for them to do. Encourage them and be present to do it with them. Be present to do the activities with your downlines. You don't just tell them, go and do, go and do, go and do. They cannot do, right? That's why our business is powerful. Our system shows you exactly what to do if you follow the system. A boss tells people, go and do this. A, a leader shows them what to do, leads, with, leads them to do it. I tell people, take your notes, take your notes, take your notes. And I tell them to take their notes because I take my own notes too. If you look here, if you look here, the notes are here. The notes are here. All here, right? I got this note. I started using this note um, January, January last year. And in January last year, look at the topic. The, the topic here, my, what I wrote here. Top project, top two. This target was for me to become the number two highest earner in Nigeria, right? In, in, in December 2018, when I, when I got this, this notes, right? Now in January, I now put it there. Today's date, 11th October, 2019. Deadline, um, 30th August. Now this date is the date on which I am supposed to be the top two in the whole of Nigeria, right? That was what I wanted to achieve. I didn't hit the targets. I ended up at top 11, at top 11 in the whole of Nigeria. Do you know how many distributors there are in Nigeria? In M Global? There are millions of distributors in M Global in Nigeria. And I became top 11. I wrote down my goal. I didn't achieve it. So you need to set their expectations right. Let them know where they want to get to. Let them know that we are going to provide them the roadmap. And just like a map, they are the one that will take the journey on their own. A map is useless if you don't use it, right? So get that done. Stop them from talking to people. Tell them the do's and the don'ts of the business. Don't let them go out and start talking to people about the business because they will get bombarded by negativity. So stop them from going out and tell people about the business and I've signed up in the business, come and do, come on. No, 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 no. If you do that, you won't have a business. Let them know that our job, our business is not a convincing business. Our business is not a trading business. So we are not into a business of trading and, com and, and convincing people. Come and convince my friend. Come and convince my friend. Somebody come in. Um, I come and please come and convince my friend to sign up into the business. I said, I don't do the convincing business. What I do is the consultancy business, right? And the connecting business. So I do the consultancy business. I show people the system, show them the benefit of the system, show them what, how this system can transform their lives, Show them examples of people whose lives have been transformed by this system, and I let them make the decision to be or not to be. I don't put my hands into their pocket. I don't force them to do a business because they say a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion. And it takes away the pressure from me. 
Because I know that what I'm trying to do is to show everyone the business to the best of my ability. I leave no stone unturned. But when I'm done, you make the decision to join yourself or not. It's as simple as that. So stop them from talking to people. Connect them to all our meetings. Whatever meeting it is, it is we have. The cell meetings, the IPO, the quick start guide. So you connect them to our, all our meetings. Whether it's the IPO, whether it's the quick start guide, the presentations, the, the summits, the mastery summits, the master class, the question and answer sessions, whatever meeting we have, those links are together. We've sent out the links to everybody in the team. Have them and send them the link. When you send them the link, guide them. Guide them. Tell them, okay, the first one is this. It holds by so and so time. The next one is this. It holds by so and so time. This one is this. It holds by so and so time. Some leaders go as far as for every meeting, they will bring out the particular meeting for them, program for that meeting and send it to their team members one by one. Some post it on the chat group for that specific time so that people know what they need to do. So send them the information. Don't leave your business to chance. When you don't sponsor somebody well in the business, it's like you set up a shop, open up your shop, then you get workers and put there without training the workers, without telling the workers what to do. And you abandon them there to do things on their own. You come back into the shop while you won't have a business anymore. Because they will surprise you. So ensure you tell them what to do. If you don't train them on the right things to do, they will go and acquire trainings on their own from different places. And guess what? Your business is the one to suffer. Guide them. Tell them to make the 50 name list and come with it to the IPO. Right? Now, as the time they're coming for the IPO, they should have had at least 50 names written down. Yes, we're going to ensure they fully understand, ensure they fully understand how to make the name list. Ensure you tell them to make the names, write the names of the person, write the numbers of the person, the number of the person, write the location of the person. Right? So ensure you tell them how to make the name list. We also tell you to write the status of the person. Status is M-A-N. M means the person has money. A means the person has authority. And N means the person has need. Need means need for the product or need for money because the person is broke. Right? So M-A-N. If the man has money and authority, his status is M-A. Authority means somebody who has control over maybe a pastor and a mom, a head of a department or something like that. You tell people, come, they come. But if the guy is a broke youth president, he is broke and he has authority over his fellow broke youth, his authority, his, his status is A-N. So if you write the name, his name, location, I mean, name, um, name, number, location, and the status, we want to start calling those who are the M and the MAs first. People that have money. You know why? Because these are the people. You write all of them, just put their status. But we're going to call the M's and A's first. Because you are not in a charity organization. You're in a business. If you have a supermarket, your customer is not the person coming for window shopping. Your customer is the person who is coming to actually buy something from your business. Because it is the act of purchasing from your business that puts money in your bank account. So too in our business. We are not going to show people how beautiful, we, how good we are in speaking. We're not, <coughs> we're not going to showcase our, our, our speaking prowess. All we are trying to get them to do is to sign up into our business so that we make money and they to make their own money and everybody goes home happy. That's what we're trying to do. So you need to start with those who can afford to pay first. Unless they're not in your list. If they're in your list, we talk to them first, then we move to those who cannot do it immediately. Right? Step by step. Now, pay attention. Tell your new downlines as you sponsor them because they need to know there's a limit to this disco we're going to have together. Right? You want us to have this dance? It is not going to be an unending dance. It's going to be limited for a time. So use that time wisely. So tell them you will work with them for three months, three months, to build the base of their business. And you will support them as they run their business on their own over the next nine months. You are not going to work with them for nine months, for 12 months. You are going to support them for only three months. So open your eye. In three months, you should have learned how to do it very well. You should have built a solid foundation for your business. You should have started making good money in your business. Then I can monitor what you are doing over the next nine months before I let you be on your own completely. 
But don't just say, I'm going to be working with you, then you sit down with them, and you know, day, night, morning, night, for the next two years, you are still struggling with your downlines. There are some people in my group who have been here for over a year, two years plus, and they are still not making good money in the business, but they are still present. They are still present. Why? Why is it so? It's because they've not decided to take their businesses in their hands. There's a difference between being blind and being in the business. That you are a name in the end global computer does not mean you're in the business. That's why I will tell you that in our team, you first become a distributor. Everybody starts off as a distributor because end global has signed you up. Then for you to now graduate to the next level of, of authority in our business, you become a connector. And you become a connector after you've run the SMO checklist satisfactorily, right? To the to the to the satisfaction of an effective leader in your team. What that means is that you have done five weeks of activities that grow the business. So you need to understand clearly. And the people you sponsor need to understand clearly that you have this thing to run with them for three months. They should take advantage of those three months and build their business, right? Get them to commit to attending the IPO and the QSD. Very important. Let them commit to it. Let them tell you, I will be there no matter what is happening. Let them tell you. When you sponsor somebody, don't just let them IPO on Monday. No, get the commitment from them. And on that day, send them the invitation for the IPO, send them the link to the IPO meeting and ensure they attend the IPO. Don't leave it to them. The reason some people don't succeed in our business is because you leave too many things to chance. You assume it's going to be, it's going to be well. Permit the language I'm going to use now. I don't I wouldn't want to use it ordinarily, but this is the language that best commit that best describe exactly what I want to talk about. Assumption is the mother of all fuck ups. I won't say it twice. I know you heard it clearly the first time, right? So when I say it again, you will fill up the blank space by yourself. So assumption is the mother of all filling the blank space in your head. That is what happens in the business. When you assume people know what to do, when you assume, okay, they heard the IP, they heard about the, the 50 name list, they heard about the, the big announcement call in the IPO, and they will come and do it. You will be in for a very rude shock. Do not assume anything in our business. Don't assume. Make sure that you give them what to do. Even if they say they remember, call them, remind them. You know why? You are not building your business. It is their business. You are building your own business. It's their responsibility to build their own business. So by you reminding them to come to the IPO, to come for the trainings, to do the activities, you are building your business. That's the reason why you actually sign up into the business. Now, call them. Call them after the IPO is done. When they attend the IPO, as they are going for the IPO, tell them, take a note. Write notes. You find people come to the IPO, they don't have anything they're writing with. Right? If I say what you raise up to what you're writing with now, some people don't have anything they're writing with. They are committed to memory. Understand this. The best, the best pen is better than the best brain. Right? Sorry, the worst pen, the worst pen is better than the best brain. No matter how much you put everything in your brain, you will forget. Commit it to paper. Learn how to use paper to write. Right? I have about three books I use in my business. When an idea pops into my head, I write it down immediately. Because I know that in the next five seconds, I have forgotten about the idea. So I write it down. Then when I come back, I can look at the idea and I know what to do about it. So after the IPO is done, call them. Do a Zoom call. With the advent of Zoom, you should be talking more with your prospects, with your team members on Zoom and not just on phone. By doing this, they are not hearing you. They are hearing you. They are not seeing you. But when they are looking at you, you are looking at them. You know when they are distracted. I usually have mentorship meetings with people in my team in the, in the evenings. And as I'm talking to some of them, they can be doing something, I'll say, you are being distracted. Some of them will put up their video camera. I'll say, no, put on the video camera. Right? If I didn't want to have that, I would have gone, I would have made a phone call to you. So put on the camera. Let me see you. You see me. Right? We're not trying to judge how beautiful the house is or what it is you I'm interested in. The house is not so beautiful. I understand that. Doesn't matter. That's why you're in the business. That's the reason I'm calling you. Because the house is not beautiful. That's why I'm calling you. So that we can build a business with you. And in two years' time, when I'm calling you again, you are living in this amazing, beautiful mansion that you can afford to turn your camera around and show me everywhere. So don't let infinitesimal issues bother you. 
Put on your, 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 your camera. Let us listen. Let us talk with you. Let us see and converse with you. We want to know if our words are reaching you. Don't work with too many people at the same time. Trust people to take up responsibilities for themselves. Don't work with too many people at the same time. So don't work with too many people at the same time. Trust them to take up responsibilities for themselves. There's this saying that um, you can carry one person on your back comfortably. If you are strong, you can carry two people on your back. One on top of the other one. But no matter how strong you are, you can't carry three people on your back. You will topple backwards. So allow people to take responsibility for themselves. As you are working with your downlines, ensure you allow them to do things on their own too. Some of them want to set up their own chat groups. They want to begin to talk to their own people. Don't stop them. Just ensure that what you give to them is good stuff. Ensure that they get the best from you and then you take the, they take the best they've gotten from you and hand it over to their own people who are there. So their own people will now take from there and hand over to their own people down there. Ensure you sponsor them right and then you will also be in their chat group so they are monitoring what they are doing there. When you are in that chat group, your job is observation. Observation. Right? So from time to time, you call him out, okay, you didn't do this well, you didn't do this well, do it like this. The guy goes back to his group and does it like that. Do it. Very important. Give them responsibilities. Sometimes all my downlines will do a nice write-up and send to me to help them um, they, 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 to help them correct it. And after correcting the rest of them, they will say, if I can post it. I say, no, you go ahead, sign it, sign your name here and post it yourself so that you get the credibility. So trust your downlines to do the right things. Sometimes I write out something, I, I figure out something, I call my downlines, I say, okay, listen carefully. I tell them what I want to do. I say, okay, put it in a write-up and send to me. They put it in a write-up and send to me. I tell them, post it on the chat group. But put your name and post it in the chat group because the person has done some work on it. And when people comment about those things, they are the ones that are receiving the glory. Leaders, let me tell you what leaders do. If you want to learn to grow this business, leaders give away the glory. Right? You want to become a leader? Give away the glory. You don't need it. You don't need it. Keep giving it out. Keep giving it out. Leaders are people who share the glory. Bosses are people who take the glory. The boss wants to be the one that if this company is going, it is my job. And when I did, I know I did. I, I know, no, 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 no. For a leader, by people that these people are doing this, they are the ones doing it, they are the ones doing it, give them the glory. The moment you are there dishing out people, dishing out the credibility, sharing the credibility to everybody in your team. You become somebody that is up, up, up there. That is how you lead people. Encourage them to read books. I've said that initially, to read books as much as they can. Read books. Because in a book, that's where you find the secret to everything you're looking for. It's written in the book. Read it. You are learning from the experience of other people. Read books. Book them for the next question and answer session and the next quick start guide. Book them for it. Send them links. Let them know that this is the next thing that's going to be happening for them in the business. Now, very important also, pay attention, very important. Everybody needs to understand this. And you need to know how to do it to teach them. Teach them, in the course of sponsoring them, how every door you open leads to other doors, lead to other doors, and ultimately leads to unlimited prospect. Let them know that. Because, you see, when you sponsor someone... There is only a limited number of prospects they can call on their own, from their own name list. And sooner or later, they are done with it. It's exhausted. And when it's exhausted, what do you do? How do they generate other call, other people? Pay attention is so simple. And I've been teaching this for a long time now to lots of people in the team. When they come, they tell me they don't have anybody to call. It's so simple. If you, there are two ways you can get that done. One is by getting two referrals from everybody who attends your presentation and says, I don't want to sign up. I've done that with people. You attend, somebody attended your presentation and said, okay, I love this, what they are doing, but I wouldn't want to join. <coughs> I have other things I'm doing right now. I wouldn't have the time. What do you do? I appreciate the fact that you love what I do. I appreciate the fact that you would have wanted to do it if you had the time. Who do you know in your circle of, of course, this is after you have done all that things to hold, handle that objection to get him to sign up, and if he's still not interested in sign up, you tell him, okay, who do you know within your circle of influence 
right? Two people you can give to me that you think might be open to listening, just listening. I'm not saying sign up, to just listening to what we have got to say. And if the guy is a smart person, reasonable person, he'll give you two names. If he's not a jerk, he'll give you two names. The next time we ask him, can I call them and say that you recommended them to me? Will it be okay? I use your name. I said, sure, no problem. You can tell them I did that. No problem. I give them the calls. And when I give them the calls and those ones decide to attend, they attend beautiful. And from those ones who attended, some might sign up. They told them, right? From those two, if they don't sign up, I collect two, two from them. From those ones, two, two from them. From those ones, two, two from them. I'm following those people, I have a whole lot of people <coughs> who want to sign up into my business. Let's study three ways. That's the first one. The second way I do that, for everybody who comes into my presentation and does not sign up immediately, but indicates strong interest to sign up, what do I do? I get my leader to call him. I can get the leader to call him. And what is the leader telling him? He's going to use a script called the script for getting people who have attended the presentation to give us 50 names. He calls him, he tells him, um, uh, Mr. John, you said you came to our business, you like the business, wanted to blah, 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 blah. Now, the longer shot, there's a script for that in the success manner. The longer shot of this is this. I'm going to tell him that we can get his business started before he signs up into the business. So the moment he pays his money, he's starting his business and people are coming over him. So if he can give us 50 names, right, and then send them this SMS, then we're going to call them. We are going to call them for him. With our money, our time, we're going to call them. If they sign up, we're going to keep them. And then once he signs up, we're going to put them under him. Everybody wants to do that. So even though he has not signed up, he's prepared to give us 50 names there and then. He's prepared to send them the SMS there and then because he wants the business to happen, to, to, he wants the business to start growing. From 50 people, I can have 10 more people coming in that give me another 50, 50 names, that's 500. And I practically don't run out of numbers, out of names to call. So you can see that when you open one door, that door can lead to another door, that leads to another door, that leads to another door, that leads to another door, and it continues to open. So the first way, collect two names for everybody who tells you no. The second way, you collect 50 names from everybody who comes into the business and has not signed up yet. And the third way, you call your sleeping down lines or your dead down lines. And you tell them, I want to do the business for you. For you. Guess what? Some people are saying, why for you? Guess what? If it pays them, it will pay you. You are building your business, not their business, right? So I want to do, this, do something for you. Give me 15 names to call. I will call them by myself, even though those people are not serious in the business. Right? I will call them myself. Don't worry about it. I will call them. If they sign up, I will sign them up under you. But I will be the sponsor. You will be the upline. You will make it for it, but I will be the sponsor. If he doesn't agree, he can call them on his own. After all, he's not calling them. And also let him know that you are not calling them does not mean others are not calling them, does not mean you are not joining other people. So whatever I'm doing is to your advantage. He gives us the names, sends them the message. And guess what? We call them. We invite them. They come. They join. I take the sponsorship, right? You will learn about that later on. And then I sign them up under my downline. He's making a four eight. He can make a four eight and match and make very good money, become a millionaire. But I also make a lot of money, right? Because I was able to create the business. So what you need to understand is this: you must find a creative way. These things are things you now do with them after they have done their IPO. So after they have done their initial thing, they need to do in the business. So as you do this things with them, you need to guide them and work with them. So you don't need to work with too many people at the same time by working with a few people effectively for a reasonable period of time, you're going to build such a huge team that you will be so shocked. Between now and the end of this year, for me, I'm practically going to work with just about 10 people only. Right? And I'm going to build with those people until they become really, really massive legs in the business. Even if I have someone that's going to sign up into the business, it has to go under one of those people. I'm going to build with them to become massively successful in the business. Remember, I have a target. 
So you to make your own targets and then learn how to work with your people to build unlimited income potential for themselves. Another good tip you need to understand is this when you sponsor your people, meet with everyone you sponsor, you sponsor twice a week on Zoom to keep them motivated. Meet with them two times every week. Choose any two times. Me, I meet with them three times in a week. So you can meet your people twice in a week, once in a week, however you want to do it, and so that if you are the one that brought someone into the business, you meet with that person to handle, to talk about the business. Don't just abandon them. And the meeting can be done on Zoom. Zoom makes it possible for you to meet with 20 people across Nigeria at a particular time. And you guys are there, you talk to them, they talk to you, you ask them questions, you see them, they see you, you, ask, you answer maybe you answer questions, and they feel part of a team. Do that. Because so many of us, our businesses, our businesses are not doing well because we don't sponsor people well in the system. And finally, the most important activity of getting your new distributor started right is working the SMO checklist with them and teaching them to do the same with their teams. You will learn about the SMO checklist when we talk about when in the IPO. Many of you have already known about that, right? You see that SMO checklist? The holy grail of our business. That is the ten commandment of our business. If you go against the SMO checklist, you are committing a mortal sin against our business. Because if you want to become successful in our business, everything to drive your success is in the SMO checklist. So I tell people, hold uphold the sanctity of the SMO checklist. Uphold the sanctity. Don't play with it. Teach it in your team. Engrave it in the minds of your of your team members. Teach them to hold to hold it, hold, hold the sanctity of that SMO checklist. Don't let them deviate from it because the moment they do those activities and become masters at those activities and learn how to teach their people to do those activities and also learn how to teach their people to teach their people to teach and to do the activities, your business will get out of your hands. My most powerful leaders in the team today are people who hold the SMO checklist in high regard. They don't deviate from it at all. Those task service activities are there and they are standard. They are designed to build success in your business. These leaders who are doing very, very well are leaders who are not deviated too much, right? Let me read something out to you from your first year in network marketing, right? From your first year in network marketing, let me look for the information. Chapter six, right? Of your first year in network marketing, chapter six, Fending off the scatter bomb. Fending off the scatter bomb. That's chapter six. It says, stay focused and miss all distractions. Right? I'm going to read quite some stuff. Pay attention. The next great obstacle in the battle for success probably afflicts every single distributor who enters our industry. We call it the scatter bomb. It is quite easy to fall into this booby trap because of the very changeable nature of our business. Simply put, the scatter bomb is a mental explosion that diffuses the focus of distributors, causing them to stop using the system they have been taught and to frantically follow any and every network marketing system that comes along. The scatter bomb occurs frequently in the first year sending new distributors in search of, a, of any new leader, company, sales aid, or system that might enable them to succeed more rapidly and more easily. This divisive weapon is quite deceptive because it comes disguised as the ultimate new tool or the perfect strategy for success. Sometimes it is a new manual or video which many new distributors assume will be more effective than the work program currently used, merely because it is new. Other times, it is a new leader who comes to town with a brand new way to do the business, and since he's making more money than you, his system must be better than yours. When your spirits are really down, it can even be a new company with a better compensation plan. Whether the scatter bomb takes the form of a person system or company, the very worst thing that you can do in your first year is yield to the temptation of changing the direction every time a new system comes along. 
page 143, your first year network marketing, pending of the scatter bomb. That's what I'll tell you, read the books. And that's one thing that has kept a lot of people in a perpetual cycle of starting. You are also starting the business over and over again because you are always in the scatter bomb mode. Every time somebody says one small thing, you are excited. Hey, you can do this one. You don't do that one. You watch a video. Hey, you can do this one. You don't do that one. You see one thing online. Hey, you can do this one. You don't do that one. Your friend is doing it. You don't. Hey, my friend is You don't do that one. And you cannot stay focused on the one activity on the activities that have been given for you to do. You need to understand that that activity that I've been giving you to do has created success in many people. And the way it did for them, so it becomes successful for you too. But even if you go to the other new tool, and then you see a new one better than one, that one, right? After that one, you see another one better than the old one. Then you see a brand new company that pays better than M Global, you deviate. When we started M Global, shortly after I started, a company called um, Phytosciences came along. And one of the first leaders I saw I met in network marketing, um, the man is a doctor from um, um, Benin Republic. I used to fix internet access in his home. I used to work for him, right? And then he never, when I, when I was working those things with him, he was doing, he was doing um, network marketing. I saw him talking to a lot of people. They would come to his office, his house. He would talk to them, teaching them what to do, telling them what to do. He never for once mentioned network marketing to me. I don't know, maybe he felt he's just an installer. He can't do anything. And then, or maybe he's not to the level of people that would do network marketing to how I want it to be. And I was just a bloody young installer. I was just doing my installations and doing what I was doing. He never for once mentioned it to me. In 2016, when we were doing our second event in C21FG at the Bentley Hotel in Utako, Abuja, I, we were using the hall downstairs. And no, that was when I was launching my own campaign. When I was launching my own, the 28th of August, 2016, I was launching my own business. So we're downstairs and we had to get something upstairs. So I went upstairs and all of a sudden I entered there and they were doing something there in the hall. And once I put my head, who did I see? Him. I went there, I met him, I greeted him. And he laughed, ah, I said, what are you doing here? I said, we're having a program downstairs. Oh, you guys are the ones downstairs. I said, yes, I'm the one anchoring the stuff downstairs there. He said, what is it? What are you into? I said, Alliance Emotion Global. He said, ah, Alliance Emotion. Mm. You, you, you should have joined me in phytosciences. Phytosciences is very good, very effective. They pay more, they do this, they did that, they did it, you know. Guess what? My matching bonus was 5,700 naira then. Phytosciences was paying in dollars. Their equivalent was almost 40,000 naira matching bonus alone. Almost 40,000 naira matching bonus then. It was huge. Right? I can't remember that figure, but it was huge. Almost four, five times my matching bonus. Any same person we say, this one is better. Let me join that one. But network marketing is not for same people. Same people are found in the offices. Same people are found wearing tie in the banks, doing same things, right? Same things like things that are following the same rules and regulations and do this, do this, do this, getting paid a same salary at the end of the month, right? You are paid the same salary of 200,000 naira a month, 300, 400,000 naira a month, those are the kind of places you find same people doing same things. Network marketers do insane things. They get paid insane amount of money. 10 million naira a month, 15 million naira a month. That is insane. And that is what I was built of. Insane stuff put together in one human being. I didn't budge. I focused and did my business. Today, phytosciences is no longer in the ball game in Nigeria. They are off. They're no longer existing. They have to go and change their name and came back as each other company. And that one they came back with is still not doing anything. Alliance Emotion is still here. It's still growing. I've become super successful in the business. I know I've made much more money than that man has made in the in, in network marketing. Because I stuck to my game. Don't let the scatter bomb get you. Follow the SMO checklist. If you do this, many of us have not really looked at the SMO checklist. We just look at it as a as on the super superficial. We've not digested it, look at the content and ask myself, if somebody succeeds at 20% doing this SMO checklist, what will be the result of the person? It means you would have gotten a couple of people who are serious, who will do the SMO checklist, who also be serious. Even if you have 15 accounts and only two people 
are seriously doing the SMO checklist like you, and you are teaching those people and working with them going down the line. Four billion naira monthly. Four million naira monthly. Insane cash flow in a month. At four million naira a month, you are one of the top five percent highest earners on planet X. At four million naira a month, you're one of the top. 5% highest earners on planet X. No matter what is happening in other countries in the world. You can travel to any country in the world. You can live the good life anywhere in the world. You can stay in any hotel in the world. You can any, enter any flight in the world at 4 million naira a month. Not to talk about when you hit 10, 15, 20, 30. And for those of you who are listening right now, please, I need to make this thing clear. And I've been mentioning million, 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 million. You are beginning to think these things are not true. I want you to do something for me. Please go to the chat group now and type, I can make over a million naira monthly. Type it down in the chat group. I can make over a million naira monthly. Right? Type it down there. After typing, I can make over a million naira monthly. I also want you to type, I am worthy of success. I am worthy of success. Type it down there now. Let's see it. Because you must believe. You must believe it. I can make over a million naira monthly. Then you also type, I am worthy of success. Type it. Even if I keep talking, talking, just keep typing it and going. Because you must believe it in yourself. You must program yourself to accept it. Because if you don't believe it, if you don't accept it, no matter what we do, you will not get it. But when you believe that you are worthy of success, when you believe that you can do this, even if your salary today is 20,000 naira, you can achieve it. You can achieve it. We have many of them in our team. When we set up our office in suit five, there's a young man that used to mount our fan. Put the fan, you buy the fan for us. In fact, the best fan we could buy was Tokumbo. We bought Tokumbo fan to set up our first office. That's what we use that Tokumbo wall fan, Tokumbo, Tokumbo that, Tokumbo television. They went and bought the Tokumbo television. We put all those in Tokumbo. In suit five, Shalom Plaza. He was the one that got the job to go and do everything for us. Your, your light bulb is spoiled. He was the one that will come and change it. Today, the gentleman drives a beautiful Camry. When he signed up into this business, his target was 6,000 naira a month extra for his family. Somebody that wanted 6,000 naira extra for his family. Today, does over 3 million naira in a month. How do you think life is going to be for him, for such a person? There are many people that came here with, with um, as a time they came here, um, um, my colleague, the top nine highest earner in Nigeria, how much was her salary where she, where she was working before she joined us? Miss Didi, the number one highest matcher in the whole of Nigeria. Currently, the number one top matcher in the whole of Nigeria. Her salary was 20,000 naira in an FM station in Abuja here. If you told her then that she can be doing over 2 million naira in a month, she wouldn't believe you. One day she told me that she knows how her thirties will look like. She's in her 20s now, probably 27, 28, there about. She says she knows how her thirties will look like. I said, I know how your 30s will look like. Because by the time she's in her 30s, the worst kind of money she can be making on the month, right? And if she hears me say this, she will tell me back to send that. The worst kind of money she can be making in the month she will, not, will not be less than 40 million naira in the month by the time she's 30 years old. She cannot be doing less than 40 million naira in the month. And if she sees this video and hear me say this, she will tell me back to send that. Because by then, she knows where she will be. Not 40 million. That's, that's thinking small. Because I know what is possible for this business in the next couple of years. I want you guys to dream with us. I want you to dream with us. Dream with us. Pay attention. When we started this business in 2016, we never anticipated this level of success today. Yes, we knew we were going to be successful, but we didn't anticipate this level of success. We knew we were going to make money. I remember in 2017, when the M Global chairman came to our office in Shalom Plaza, he told us that if you are not by then the top end among us to end about one million dollars thereabout, he said, if you are not making five million dollars a month in this business, you have not started. And we couldn't imagine what he was saying. How can you say we are not started when you say five million dollars? What does this man mean? What did he think that you know blah, blah, blah. when he when he left? We started talking, five million, what does it mean? Okay. Now we understood what he was talking about. We understood what he was talking about. 
if you're in this business, your life will change. Your life will change. Yes, we came, we were thinking about building small things, you know, growing gradually, growing gradually. We were prepared to be here for a very long time, but we didn't know the level of success we we're going to have today. Some of you have entered the offices of the leaders here. You see how amazing those offices are. The kind of money people have spent in offices, the kind of cars people are driving right now, the kind of houses people are erecting, the kind of cash flow in the bank accounts of people, the lifestyle that people are living right now, being able to travel the world, not just you traveling, but you taking your team on vacations. The way you have been able to influence, we have been able to influence the lives of people in our team. From zero, zero, no downline, no money in the bank, no experience, right? No system, no scripts. Built a business that pays some people today in our team about 30 million naira in a month. 20 million naira every month. Where do you think the business is going to be from now over the next, from now, with over 20,000 people in the team? People making very good money. With the powerful system we have, the best system in the world, with the best brains working with us right now, over the next four years, some people are going to be making a killing in the business. I want you to dream and understand what I'm telling you. Because in the next four years, You'll be seeing housing estates in Abuja here, in Lagos, in Lekki, in different parts of Nigeria, springing up. The name of the estate, La Buena Villa, Abu La Buena Vida Villas. You will see that. People in our business will own private jets. People in our business will own massive schools, massive industries, massive business. In the next couple of years, we are going to have built over 50,000 monthly millionaires. And with 50,000 monthly millionaires, we can change the, the, the landscape of Nigeria. We can decide to put somebody to become the president. By the time out of 50,000 millionaires in Nigeria, from our team, we get everybody to make a contribution of 1 million naira. 1 million times 50,000, how much is that? We can win any election in Nigeria. All we need to do to win an election is to decide who is going to be the president, and then we promote that person from the level of the, of the mastermind to the G leaders, to the emerging leaders, down the line, spread it down the line. And all of a sudden, we can say, Marjorie for president, 2028. And you know what's going to happen? Everybody endorses Marjorie for president. Move it down the line. Marjorie is our president. At the level of the state, we do the same thing. By the time you know what's happening, we are able to influence in our own environment 10 people to support Marjorie because she is the person that we are pushing in the campaign. And you will know that millions of people are going to push her in. And with the kind of money and contributions we have, we can change the political landscape in Nigeria. That is the dream. The La Buena Vida is huge. We have dreamt. Just the way we dreamt in 2016, we have dreamt again. We have seen a new vision, and we are going there. I was talking to my wife about this about yesterday or there about. This is a vision. This is the dream. We are going to get there. We are going to voice out these dreams as a leadership in the team. And we'll voice it out, hand it over, so that we begin to dream and dream and dream. And you know what's going to happen? We are going to get there. Because we have done it before. We can do it again. Thank you very much. God bless you all.